So we're here at the UBC farm. Why did you choose this site? Well, I chose this site because it does have a lot of deciduous trees and we wanted to show the influence of these deciduous trees on the forest floor. Okay. And we have big leaf maple and okay. a lot of alder. Yeah. And why do we have deciduous trees here? Well, as it turns out, it's the disturbance history of the area in that uh, it had been cleared about mm -hmm. maybe 60 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, and the first trees to come in were the deciduous trees. Okay. So we've dug down to the bee horizon and we can see how the forest floor is sitting on top of the mineral soil. Uh, why are these organic horizons important? Well, to begin with, I wanted to point out that, um, that that we have organic horizons makes this soil very different from an agricultural soil, mm -hmm. um, because an agricultural soil is just mineral soil and no, with no organic horizons on it. So here in the forest soil, we have the organic horizon. And so it's um, having an influence on everything from above um, that doesn't happen in agriculture. Mm. So it has an influence on the um, availability of nutrients on this site because a lot of the nutrients are held within this organic matter that's here and as the organic matter decomposes the nutrients become available. Mm. It uh, has an influence on the physical properties of this site so the moisture holding capability. So this this organic material is really good at holding on to moisture and keeping this site moist even when it gets quite dry. And then also it, it influences temperature. It has a buffering influence with temperature so that we don't get huge temperature extremes down in the mineral soil. Mm -hmm. In relation to, you probably are thinking about uh, climate change, how forest floors perhaps could relate to climate change. Well, this is a, an area where there's a lot of carbon in, in the forest floor. And so the carbon in that soil that could be either a carbon sink or it could be a carbon source if it decomposes. So the, it's important in terms of global climate change as well. So you mentioned the deciduous trees here. We have maple and alder. Uh, how is the litter from those trees affecting the forest floor properties here? Well, this, this litter is falling from the, the trees, the alder and the big leaf maple and black cottonwood to the surface and this litter is quite fertile, fertile, has a lot of nutrients in it, particular nitrogen from the alder but other nutrients as well and this uh, means that the organisms here have access to carbon and to the nutrients mm -hmm. and they use that as a food source and they, they mix the organic material in to the soil so we end up with this AH down here. So the forest floor above with the organisms in it that's formed mm -hmm. from the leaves mixing into the AH below. Now I should mention that we don't have much L here and that's because we're shooting in the summertime and so it's decomposed that material has. Um, but in the, if we came back in the fall we'd have much more litter because it would have freshly fallen. How is measuring the depth of forest floor horizons different than measuring mineral horizons? Well, the, the mineral horizons we measure from the, from the mineral organic interface down. So here we have a B and then we have an AH and the forest floor starts up here. So if we were measuring the mineral soil, we would go find that interface right about there and take our measuring tape and measure from that point and down. Okay. So, so for our AH, what would you say in centimeters we have in terms of depth? Uh, about 15. Yeah, roughly about 15 centimeters, and then we're into the B. For the, or the organic horizons or the forest floor, we measure from mineral organic interface and up. And so we're going to put it here and measure up in this direction. So the total depth is about, what do you see there? Maybe five centimeters. Okay, five, six centimeters. That's our total forest floor. And so we'd go zero and up to seven centimeters or five centimeters. And uh, that would be how we'd measure the, uh, the organic horizons. Okay. In this section of the UBC farm, the trees are a little different. What can you tell me about the trees we're seeing here? Well, the trees we see here are trees we typically find in this area. And so we have Douglas fir and we have some hemlock as well. And uh, we typically find them in a mix in this kind of coniferous forest. Okay. Can we go take a look at the forest floor? Sure, let's go. I've noticed here we have a bit more of a litter layer. Why are these coniferous needles not decomposing as much as the deciduous leaves? 
Well, they're, they're here and fairly thick because they um, have uh, poor quality for decomposition. Mm -hmm. And that quality relates to the characteristics of the coniferous needles. Coniferous needles have more carbon, less nitrogen, so they have a higher CN ratio. And uh, they also have more lignin here. There's twigs here, you can see the twigs, and they've got um, high lignin content, and so they don't decompose as rapidly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we end up with a fairly thick ish um, L, L horizon. Okay. And also, I noticed we have a fairly thick AH, and it doesn't seem like we have much of a F horizon. Why is that? Well, typically we would expect an F horizon under these conifers, and we don't have that here. And that's most likely due to these organism, this organism here, the earthworm. And I'm pulling one up from below, but we saw others while we were digging here. And these earthworms are active because they're in this area where at UBC farm, and we're, there were plenty of earthworms around the area, and they've migrated into here. And they've been quite active in eating up forest floor and mixing it into that mineral soil, mm -hmm. thus forming that deepish AH.